IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Basketball Game of the Week. Brought to you by Buckeye Toyota, Bay Food Market, Fairfield County Adam H., The Savings Bank, Fairfield Medical Center, The Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, The Carriage Company, Fairfield DD, Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, Dagger Law, and North Body Shop. And good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Interface Video Productions High School Basketball Game of the Week. I'm Jared Stewart alongside Tim Shoemaker. Tonight, we're at Fairfield Union High School for a big Mid-State League Buckeye Division girls basketball matchup between the Fairfield Union Falcons and the Blue Carroll Bulldogs. And Tim, let's jump right into it. This is going to be a really good basketball game. These two teams met a little earlier in the season, a really close game. A lot on the line tonight. A lot. Blue Carroll can guarantee themselves a tie for the league championship with a win tonight. They're tied right now with Taze. Taze hosts Liberty Union. And you never know in these, these crazy things. This division has been very, very good this year. Let's talk first about uh, Bloom Carroll. Coach A.J. Ireland, uh, who is, he's really done a nice job. He's, uh, he's in his fourth season overall with this girls team. They won the first meeting with Fairfield Union uh, back on December 20th. They won it 56 to 50. And as you mentioned, tied for the lead with Taze Valley. But you know, this is a club that, you know, they, they just seem to get better and better and better as the season goes on. Well, they do such a nice job with skill development. Number one, we're going to see, as, as the starters get introduced, we're going to see, uh, of course, um, with Emily Bratton, total overall skill package. And then he said they, they have a whole team of girls that are very, very talented yeah. offensively. And that comes with teaching and then the girls putting the time in. And you know, Coach Montgomery, he, he gave them a big compliment. He said they're really good defensively. Right? He shared with me this week that he said they seem to always be in the right place at the right time and, and do a very sound defensive job. And, you know, that, that's a great compliment coming from one of your peers. One thing that Coach Ireland had to do right off the bat after two games into the season, he's had to replace a senior starter. Uh, uh, who was uh, Emma Seagrave. She went down with not an injury, but she got sick. Has yeah. actually not been able to battle back yet. But at the time, she was averaging a double-double. And, and he just kind of said, next man up, next girl up. Right? Yep, that's what you got to do. You know, that's why you ha I used to say, that's why we have a team. Yeah. Everybody's got to, you know, step up and do it. And, you know, and all of them are there to play. Yeah. Let's jump over to the Fairfield Union side. Of course, you know, when you talk about Fairfield Union girls basketball, Ellie Lewis comes to mind. This is a girl who just this past Tuesday night made eight three-point shots, 36 points in the game against Jackson High School. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's what you call a shooter. <laughs> you know, tying the school record for three-pointers in the game, that's, that's pretty impressive. So we mentioned, you know, that Blue Carroll just gets better and better, but how about this Fairfield team? You know, Coach Montgomery, not really happy with record, but he's got to be pleased with how they've progressed uh, after a slow start. Yeah, they've won five out of the last six. Yeah. And some of that, they, they've had a little personnel change, especially on the perimeter, but they still want to get the ball inside. And, and when, you, when you talk about that, you're talking about Nicole Terry. She's just a heck of a player on the board. I think she's had 20, 20 plus points in the last three games here. That's impressive. And uh, since she's, you know, I know, Coach Ireland was very concerned about her physicality and play in the post. How are they going to defend it? Because they don't match up size-wise. You and I talked about it on the way over. This Mid-State League Buckeye division, there's no night off. No. No, it's it's really impressive. We, we obviously saw Liberty Union, Amanda. Uh, Amanda beat Carroll pretty sound at Amanda, you know, a week or so ago, yeah. 10 days. Really impressive win for Coach Leist and his team. Um, Coach... Um, 
Ireland was sharing with me that Logan Elm beat Athens, who is leading the TVC, wow. and Logan Elm is struggling to get wins yeah. in the Buckeye division. Unbelievable. We're just about set for the tip-off here at Fairfield Union. Our tip is brought to you by North Body Shop, providing quality customer service parts and reliability since 1979. Owner Mark North will provide you with a free written warranty on each estimate. That's Mark North of North Body Shop. He'll treat you right. And we are underway from Fairfield Union High School. Tip is controlled by the Falcons. Lewis gets it out top to Thompson. They'll swing it down to the corner. Little drive inside the paint. Shot put up and in for Isabella Neal. Well, we know Isabella from football yeah. season, believe it or not. Yep. Very good soccer player on the girls' soccer team out here. And then on Friday nights, uh, she kicks extra points and kickoffs for the Falcon football team, and she's on the board early here in this contest. Man-to-man -man defense here by the Falcons. Brown gets it back out to Bratton. Bratton baseline, kicks it out top. Here's Wilkinson. You see, Jared, they're trying to run what you call five out. You see five people outside, at least four outside the three-point line, and just trying to spread the floor so they can use their skills. In the corner, it's Alyssa Brown. Drive to the elbow, kick it back out. Marissa Wilkinson fires the three, no good. Right there for the offensive rebound is Natalie Lang. She puts it up, no good. And the Falcons with the defensive board. Neal gets it to the corner. Baseline drive, they kick it back out. Nicole Terry gets it out. Thompson, three put up off the back of the iron for Neal, rebounded by Bratton and the Bulldogs. Bratton fires up the three and got it. <laughs> Emily Bratton averaging 22.1 points per game and she gives her team the lead 3-2 with 6-19 and counting here in the first quarter. Almost thrown away there and it is thrown away by the Falcons. Just kind of anticipating where the person was going to be. Yeah, just, just one of those zig and zag things. Watch her. A little step back. Watch Emily shoot it here. She acts like she was expecting to make that, huh? Yeah. I mean, absolutely. there's. Uh, yep. Another okay. turnover. This time the Falcons take it away. Neal gets it up ahead. So Thompson, then a three put up from the top of the key. No good for Nicole Terry. And a whistle and a foul going to be called on Blue Carroll. There's Christian Thompson. He, Coach Montgomery had a lot of good things to say about her, Jared. He called her a stat suffer. I mean, he said, you're going to see her score, rebound, and you saw her right there get on the offensive boards. She's long. She's athletic. She gets steals. She blocks shots. She's just an all-around good ball player. Foul was called on Alyssa Brown. That's her first. There's Coach Montgomery. Coach Montgomery. Bloom Carroll with the rebound on the missed free throw. Tight defense put on by Thompson, and she steals it away. Here comes Christian Thompson, three on two. And we'll get it back out now to Lewis. She'll fire up the three, no good. Good hustle play by Isabella Neal to tip it out of there. Terry now drives to the block, kick it back out, and then stole it away. Bratton comes away with it for the Bulldogs. Marissa Wilkinson, her three is no good. And the rebound by the Falcons. Three to three the score, 5-18 and counting here in the first quarter. Terry gets it back out to Lewis. Swinging around now to Thompson. Spacing's not real great right now for the Falcons, Jared. Here's a lob inside, and the shot put up and in for Nicole Terry. Falcons going to come with a little bit of pressure, and a whistle and a foul going to be called yep. on Christian Thompson. you got to keep your hands back. It was a really nice offensive play just a little bit ago for Fairfield Union on the lob in. Nicole Terry took the lob and put it up and in to give her team, there it is, two-point lead. Yeah, Watch see, this. see the They're backside, Jared? Yeah. They're not there. you got to be there sooner to help. 
Back to live action quickly the other way. Brown wow. gets the roller. You got to remember, she was Central District Division II Player of the Year last year, so and first team All Ohio, Jared. So we're looking at a standout player. Ball tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with Fairfield Union. We're tied up at five. Neal to inbound. Comes into Lewis. Looking at that man-to-man -man defense. Cottrell now over to Terry. Thompson sees a wide open three. She'll take it. No good. Ah, almost. Isabella Neal thought she was going to have yep. an easy layup after a rebound, but it came off a little, I think a little bit harder than she expected. Isabella's really active right now. I mean, she's really into the game in a lot of avenues. Bratton has it stolen away. Avery Cottrell just takes it right away from her. Here's Neal, quick pass down to the corner to Thompson. Lob inside, Terry shot no good, but she puts it back up and in. Yeah, good job of staying with it. The 5'11 senior with four of her team's seven points. Little man to man then trapped the ball. Need to get it across the timeline, almost have it stolen away, and it's a 10 second violation. Yeah, the one thing the Carroll girls uh, you know, need to do with the pressure is you can't cross the ball over in front of the defender, Jared. You either have to take a back dribble to create space or keep going. Yeah. You know, one of the concerns for Coach Ireland was the length of the Fairfield Union defenders, and they do have length, and that's one reason you cannot cross over in front. Rob inside now the they're Terry. double teaming in the post. Lewis being worked on by Marissa Wilkinson. Skip pass over to Thompson. Now in the corner. Three put up, no good for Cottrell. The rebound for Bratton. Here come the Bulldogs, two on one. What nice hustle by Cottrell. The hustle back, and now a kickball will keep it with Bloom Carroll. You got to know in the middle of the floor, everybody retreats in the middle of the floor when you're a ball handler. Pressure's going to come in the middle of the floor. Three oh seven to play in the first quarter. Fairfield Union up 7-5. Nice play, but they couldn't finish it. Shot no good. Bloom Carroll retains possession. Alyssa Brown, left side now. Wilkinson for three, got it. She had no hesitation. Marissa with 14.5 points per ball game as an average, and she puts her team up 8-7. Here's Cottrell. Gets it back out to Wilkinson. Now right side, Terry. Terry backing her way in. Strong, trying to get a pass over to Wilkinson, and it's stolen away. Nice job by Alyssa Brown, but a good recovery by the Falcons, and it's blocked down there by Christian Thompson. Here's what we were talking about. She just is active everywhere. Three in the corner, put up and in for Marissa Wilkinson. Six consecutive points for Marissa Wilkinson. Gives her team an 11-7 lead. Both teams pressure on the ball full court, Jared. Good to see. Here's Terry. Now Ellie Lewis. Lewis, she fires up the three, no good. Might have been blocked. And Emily Bratton with the rebound. Fires it quickly up ahead to Wilkinson. Couldn't handle it. That's a left-handed, one-handed pass yeah. diagonal across the court. That's, that's a tough catch. Isabella Neal checks back in for the Falcons. Here we go. See the full court man pressure. Really kind of just, they're backing off now. Pick Charlie, him up at the half court. Charlie Conrad comes in for the Bulldogs. 11-7, Bloom Carroll lead, 134 and counting here in the first quarter. Cottrell had it taken away. Going the other way is Alyssa Brown, one-on-one. -on -one. 
And just threw the pass a little too low right at the feet of Charlie Conrad, and it's taken away by the Falcons. Whistle and a foul going to be called on Bloom Carroll. Going to get Alyssa Brown. That's her second. So that gets Emma Sorrell off the bench to replace her. Inbound pass comes over in the corner, the far corner. Now back down top, it's Neal. And a whistle on the foul going to be called on Charlie Conrad. Yeah. Too much hand checking. They got to adjust. Officials are not going to let you put both hands on. And, that, and that's a good thing, Jared. Lewis gives it off. Left side three. It's up and in, and she's fouled. <laughs> Macy Martindale with the three. And it'll be a chance for a four point play here. The officials are discussing. No, they say no bucket. Oh, an offensive foul. Wow. She threw her leg out. Let's, Let's look. See. Let's, Let's see. look. Oh, on the screener. Huh. Wow. That, that may have been a good call, Jared. I'd have to look at that again. Called it on Isabella Neal. That's yeah, her first. on the screen. So it wipes off the three for Fairfield Union. Not seen that call very much, though. Martindale kicks it back out. Nice quick ball movement for the Falcons. Samantha Sattler kicks it back out to Lewis. Down to 31 seconds here in the first quarter. In the corner. Three put up, no good. Offensive rebound for Thompson. Here's a long three put up for Lewis, and she's got it. Pulls him back to within one at 11-10. Remember, she hit eight threes Tuesday night against Jackson. Quickly the other way come the Bulldogs. In the corner, Charlie Conrad's three, no good. Rebounded by the Falcons, down to four seconds. Isabella Neal. Her shot no good at the buzzer, and a good first quarter, 11-10, Blue, Blue Carroll leads. And let's say tonight's game is brought to you by Fairfield DD. Fairfield DD supporting more than 1,200 people with developmental disabilities and their families in Fairfield County, bringing about a vibrant community where people can lead fulfilling lives and make meaningful contributions. So Tim, talk about that last foul that was called on Isabella Neal. Um, you know, Martindale put up a nice shot, yeah. no contact there at all, but we saw the defender go flying. What happened? I believe Isabella kind of moved slightly. I, now, I'd have to look at it again to be, be, you know, real introspective, but I think she moved on the screen, which gave the shooter an advantage, Jared, to bump off the defenders, okay. to put pressure on the shot. So I, I believe that might have been the right call. And there was no argument from the Fairfield no. Union bench, so they must have, they saw it and agreed with it. So 11 10's the score. Here you get a look at the Fairfield Union student section coming out tonight to support the Falcons. These two teams met back in December on December 20th, right before Christmas. It was won by Bloom Carroll, 56 to 50, out at Carroll. Yeah, remember, both these teams were district runner ups last year wow. in their respective districts. So. We've got two good ball teams here. And, and Amanda Clear Creek, I think, was, they were in the semifinal, district semifinal. I think you're right. So that's at least three teams from the Mid-State League Buckeye. Running jumper no good for Bratton, and the ball loose, rebounded by the Bulldogs. Here's a long three put up, top of the key, no good for Wilkinson. <laughs> and it's out of bounds, it'll stay with Bloom Carroll. Yeah, he pointed the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. Coach Montgomery was like, what? Yeah, he's running to get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have somebody in his lap. <laughs> 7.39 to play in the first half. 11-10, Boone Carroll leads. Lewis, wide open three. In and out. Rebounded by the Bulldogs, Emma Sorrell. Here's a double team up here. Yep. 
Christian Thompson going to pick up her second foul. She's not sure what that means. You're going to have to explain to her. You cannot put both hands on the dribbler when yeah. they go by. You have to turn and run with the dribbler, Jared. You can run faster than they can dribble. You have to run to a spot and, once, and, once they go around you. And that may be one that she's gotten away with in some games. But, well, you know, these officials have established they're going to call yes, that. Well, so yeah, exactly. Adjust. So you have to adjust. Right. They're, they're, that's very subtle. I have no problem doing it early in the game right. and finding out what you're going to be able to do. See, they're going to face guard uh, Emily Bratton right now. Try to. Bratton's going to fire up a long three, no good. Backside rebound, a put back up and in from Charlie Conrad. Falcons got to do a better job of getting on the boards on the defensive end. Get a body on somebody. Lewis gets it down right side. Martin Dill back out now. Here's Lewis. Terry thought about the three, doesn't take it. She'll skip it over. And now a tie up. And a jump ball will stay with Fairfield Union. There's a replay of that last backside rebound and put back. Yeah, watch right here. Really no body on her at all. Yep. Nice job of catching. Power dribble. Yep, power dribble and score. Nice. Lewis for three. No good. Backside board by Emily Bratton. Tell you what, Bratton might stand maybe five, six, <laughs> but she's got a lot of defensive rebounds, especially tonight. Here's a long three, put up no good. But Bloom Carroll, Charlie Conrad, going to get three free throws. No, it was on again on the screener. She shoved the screener, I believe, Jared. Okay. Yeah, it was not on the shooter. It was not on the shot. No, it was not. They caught it on Nicole Terry, her first. Yeah. She tried to th run through the screen or push through the screen. Inbound to Conrad, back out now to Bratton. Nice crossover dribble, Bratton for three at the top and got it. Just, just create some space, Jared, so she could get her time. And that's the highest percentage three-point shot there is at the top. Emily Bratton with eight points, but in the corner for the Falcons, a three put up and in for Samantha Sattler. 16-13 Bulldogs. Wow. Here's a three in the other side. No good for Sorrell. And a defensive rebound for Isabella Neal. Yep. Good job by Isabella and good job by the Carroll defenders not to foul there. Terry backs her way underneath the bucket, kicks it back out. Neal for three. No good. Conrad the rebound. Bulldogs lead it 16-13, 5.24 to play in the first half. Brown gets it left side. Again, spacing not real good at times. You, you gotta find your spots, make good hard cuts if you're gonna run wide. Here's Wilkinson, thought about the three. Defense closed in on her. She'll get a left side now. Here's a drive. Kick it back out again to Wilkinson. Good job reversing the ball. The patience here by the Bulldogs. Drive, shot put up. I do not have 35 on my roster. I apologize for that. But a nice drive there by her. Good time out by Coach Montgomery here. They're getting two feet in the lane on, you know, Carol, like you said, was very patient and got, and got what, exactly what they wanted, a little 10 footer, eight to 10 footer in the lane. Time outside are being brought to you by the Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. You can check out their website at carriagecompany.com. And you've been seeing all these great replays. They are brought to you by Dagger Law. Dagger Law is a law firm built on more than 110 years of legal expertise. Whatever your situation, the knowledgeable legal professionals at Dagger Law can get you the help you need from a local trusted and experienced firm. Contact Dagger Law today at 740-759-4096 or visit them online at daggerlaw.com. 
Yeah, you know, when I talk about offense, we talk about four out or five out. We're talking about what we call a form of motion offense. And in motion offense, Jared, you want to do two things. You want to move the ball and you want to move your body. But you want to create space anywhere from 12 to 15 feet apart because we always talk about you can guard a person, but you can't guard yeah. space. Yep. You cannot. Why do quarterbacks throw it to a spot? Because you can't guard the spot. Right. You guard a player. Had a good look into the uh, Fairfield Union huddle. And, Tim, you know you know when you're getting old? It's, <laughs> it's when you see kids, well, I still call them a kid, that, that you coached who's now a head varsity coach and yep. married and has several kids of his own. I coached Ryan <laughs> Montgomery about 19 years ago. I was his JV baseball coach out here at Fairfield Union. He was a good pitcher for the Falcons. Nice shot put up and in for Samantha Sattler. She's got five off the bench. Yeah, that's a big that's a big pickup for the Falcons. Here they go. They're going to try and trap, trap Emily a little bit. But she just handles the ball way too comfortably. Three in the corner. No good. Offensive rebound for the Bulldogs. They'll kick it back out. Three put up for Wilkinson. Hits nothing. Nice job saving it in by 35. Again, I have do not have her name on the roster. We'll have to get that a good game time. off the bench. Yes, she has. You know, Coach Ireland talked about his team. He feels like he has a lot of skilled players. Obviously, you got Emily, who's top-notch level. See her here go through her legs. Use her left hand. 329 and counting here in the first half. Bloom Carroll with an 18-15 lead, and they lose the basketball. Another thing, you know, we talked about the other night, uh, the other game we had last week with um, Lancaster and Groport, too, is even against man pressure, pass fake, Jared. It's such a simple skill, but you've got to practice it. Pass yeah. fake against hard overplay. Left side, three-pointer put up. Off the back of the iron, no good for the Falcons. Yeah, I thought that was a little quick. Bratton, a nice pass up ahead. Shot put up and in. That's Tessa Brooks. That's Tessa. She's quick and athletic. You know, Coach Ireland had mentioned her playing off the bench, but she's not on the roster, is she? She's got four points off the bench already. Yeah, I don't, I don't see her listed. She was number two on the roster. Okay. So she just changed jersey numbers for tonight. <laughs> Martindale with a three for the Falcons to pull them back to within two. Yeah, Coach Montgomery talked about her too, how they've really kind of picked up offensively since she's gotten to play a lot more this last half of the season. Nice uh, ball fake there, but couldn't finish. On the other end, when Martindale hit that three, you know, she's she's got basically two tonight. One of them was waved <laughs> off, so she wanted it for sure. Here come the Bulldogs quickly up ahead. So they're really going to be able to pass. finish it. Good offensive rebound for Bratton. Her putback no good, but she's fouled. Yeah, it's a super pass by Emily Bratton. Again, she threw it to a spot out in front of the, the receiver here. Here's a good look at that three by Martindale. Perfect. Bratton's free throw up and good. Yeah, she's like 88% from the line, Jared. Yeah, talking to Coach, uh, you got a chance to talk to Coach Ireland. He said basically she leads us in every stat category. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's got 22.1 points per game, 6.2 rebounds, 4.7 uh, Assists, 37.5% three-point shooter. Well, we, we, we did it. Jinxed her. We shooter. did it. <laughs> Never fails. Hey, here's the thing. She's a junior. Yep. You know, we're going to get to watch a lot of these kids here that we see tonight Ellie next Lewis year. For yeah. Fairfield. I remember watching that. these two go at it as freshmen. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to get, you know, people should come out and watch. Yep. These are going to be two really good teams again well, down and, the road. And, and keep in mind, too, Fairfield Union's JV team is now 17 and two on the year. Yeah, not a not a bad little team. <laughs> Dish kick it back out now to Sophia Hahn. Now Bratton, nice fake, and the three is up, no good. 
Good hustle and rebound by Tessa Brooks. Yeah, they are just scrapping and getting offensive rebounds here, not because of their size, just because of their activity. Long three up and in for Marissa Wilkinson. That's three threes tonight for Marissa. Well, what she have? She had five in the game, I believe, Jared. Yeah, versus Logan Elm. On the other end, the three for the Falcons, no good. Bulldogs with the rebound, here they come. Bratton, shot no good, but she's fouled. Foul be called on Avery Cottrell. And that'll send Emily Bratton to the free throw line to shoot two shots. There's a good look at Emily. You mentioned just a junior. I think a phrase that I saw, there was an article that Tom Wilson down in the Gazette on she and Abby Riddle, who are now both 1,000-point scorers for their career. And, you know, one of the things that was mentioned about Emily is first in the gym, last to leave. Mm. Wow. That's a pretty simple formula to get pretty good. Yeah, it is. Used a little bit of the backboard and the rim <laughs> there, but it still counts as a point. 26-18, the biggest lead of the night for Bloom Carroll at eight. Under a minute to play in the first half. Lewis, back out front now to Martindale, now left side. Here's Terry, she'll drive. Kick it over in the corner, Isabella Neal for three. No good, and it's tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with the Falcons. Down comes in to Lewis. Martindale has it stolen away. Charlie Conrad steals it. Here comes Conrad to the block. No good, her shot was blocked and taken away by the Falcons. Yeah, Thompson, she's everywhere. Here is Thompson, she'll <laughs> kick it back out to Terry. Terry drives, now to Neal. Now Martindale for three at the top of the key. No good, down to six seconds. Lewis, or Bratton kicks it up ahead. Nice pass, but it goes out of bounds yep. as time expires here in the first half. Right look, just a little too hot. So at halftime, the Bloom Carroll Bulldogs lead the Fairfield Union Falcons 26 to 18. We're gonna take a timeout. We come back, we'll have some first half stats and analysis. You're watching the high school basketball game of the week. Bay Food Market is Fairfield County's source for high-quality, locally-sourced meats. The meat case is always full of quality, fresh beef, pork, gourmet burgers, and gourmet brats for you and your family to enjoy. Bay Food Market cures and smokes their own hams, bacon, and sausage. Visit Bay Food Market at the corner of Maple and Walnut Streets in Lancaster and discover the Bay Food Market difference. Open daily, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., closed Thursday and Sunday. Bay Food Market, proudly serving Fairfield County families for more than 90 years. Buckeye Toyota, proudly supporting the community for over 40 years. I want a doctor who listens to me. From primary care to specialty medicine, we put your needs first by treating you like a person, not a number. Our primary care team will help you identify your health care needs and set goals for success, regardless of where you are in your wellness journey. We care for patients of all ages, with offices that are close to you. Whatever you're searching for, you can find it at Fairfield Medical Center. Hi, I'm Carol Whittington, and I would like to invite you to stop by Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, located at 1540 Hubbard Drive in Lancaster. We are a small family-owned business and have been servicing the Central Ohio and Hawking Hills area since 2003. Graduations with a personal touch, weddings with a personal touch, corporate events with a personal touch. Please call us today for all your party rental needs, 740-689-6991. You walked down the aisle and promised happily ever after. Sometimes happily ever after means ending a relationship. 
We know the conversations are not easy. Deciding what's best for you, your children, and your next steps takes work and communication. At Dagger Law, we know there are no monsters in a divorce, only people trying to find their way. Local, trusted, experienced. Dagger Law. How much can you afford to spend on a home? That's a good question. I'm Desi DeJohn, Assistant Vice President and Mortgage Loan Officer at the Savings Bank in Lancaster. It's important to know how much you can afford before you contact a real estate agent. Factors such as income, credit score, debt, and down payment can help determine how much a bank can lend you to buy a home. Getting pre-qualified is the best way to find out how much you can afford to spend on a home. You can apply to pre-qualify online anytime at thesavingsbankohio.bank. Back at Fairfield Union High School, where the Fairfield Union Lady Falcons lead the Blue Carroll Lady Bulldogs, 20, or a trail the Blue Carroll Bulldogs 26 to 18. Right now, down on the court, the seventh and eighth grade Fairfield Union girls teams are being honored. I want to go over some first half scoring, first of all, for Fairfield Union. They've got six players in the scoring column. Ellie Lewis has three. Christian Thompson with one. It's Isabella Neal with two. Nicole Terry has four. Macy Martin Doe with three. And leading the scoring for the Falcons coming off the bench is Samantha Sattler with five points. For the Bloom Carroll Bulldogs, Charlie Conrad has two. It's Marissa Wilkinson with nine. Alyssa Brown has, or check that, Tessa Brooks has four. And leading the way for the Bulldogs is Emily Bratton with 11 points. So at halftime here at Fairfield Union in this very important game in the Mid-State League Buckeye Division, the Bloom Carroll Bulldogs lead it 26 to 18. We're gonna take a timeout. We'll have all the second half action coming your way next on the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Basketball Game of the Week. At Buckeye Toyota, our factory trained technicians service all makes and models. And Buckeye Toyota has been a proud community supporter and family owned for over 40 years. Check us out at MyBuckeyeToyota.com. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. My name is Scott Duff and I'm the director of the Fairfield County Overdose Response Team. And I'm here today to discuss Narcan. Narcan is the opioid overdose reversal medication. Narcan saves lives. We have saved countless lives in our community by providing Narcan to those with substance abuse disorders. We would very much like you to consider carrying Narcan on a regular basis. Narcan can be obtained easily in your community by reaching out to the Fairfield County Overdose Response Team at 740-901-1598. This message is brought to you by the Fairfield County Adam H. Board. Swing into the carriage company and check out our sweet deals. If you're looking for the best selection of clean, quality used vehicles, look no further than the Carriage Company. You'll feel secure with your purchase, knowing all vehicles undergo an extensive safety and service check prior to the sale. And all vehicles can be viewed online at carriagecompany.com. The Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. Sweet! IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Basketball Game of the Week. Brought to you by Buckeye Toyota, Bay Food Market, Fairfield County Adam H, The Savings Bank, Fairfield Medical Center, The Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, The Carriage Company, Fairfield DD, Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, Dagger Law, and North Body Shop. Welcome back, everybody. 
As a reminder, you can find live and past games on your YouTube channel. Just search for CLN, your hometown connection on YouTube, to find games and other local programming. While you're there, make sure to click subscribe so you won't miss any action. And one more point, if you're on Facebook and Twitter too, check us out on those social media platforms. Just search for Interphase Video Productions. Speaking of Interphase Video Productions, we want to give a big shout out to our crew tonight. Josh Messerly, he's uh, with us tonight, uh, doing a great job as always. Our producer director, and with uh, Josh back behind us, Donnie Ziegfeld on graphics. Our cameraman tonight, we've got Jason Roush and Shane Messina up high atop the bleachers here at Fairfield Union. And down on the floor, Tom Russo, our Fairfield, uh, or our Interphase Video Productions crew out here at uh, Fairfield Union, always doing a great job. They show up early, they get everything set up, and then they do a great job throughout the game as well. There's Tom down on the floor. Perfect placement, too, that sign right behind him as well. Yeah, so. he's advertising right there himself. <laughs> Tim, let's talk about that, that first half. You know, 26-18, Bloom Carroll leads, but my guess is both of these coaches, you know, they had some coaching up to do in the locker room. Wasn't always crisp at times during that first half. No, when you play somebody a second time in the league, we talked about this with the Grove Port Lancaster last week. It's a, it's a big game of adjustments and how you're going to do and how you're going to treat it because it's totally different the second time around sometimes. But, you know, when I look at what Coach Ireland talked about, he wanted to really take care of the ball. I, I think he's been pretty comfortable with that. They've done a pretty decent job. A couple of their uh, turnovers have been unforced, but overall not bad. And he was really concerned about uh, defending the post with Nicole Terry in the yeah. post. And you know what? I'll be honest with you, I, I think Fairfield Union needs to get uh, just a tad more patient and get the ball inside like that. They have not, when they've had it in there, she's been successful. They kind of started that way. Yes. And did a really nice job with Terry. And, and I think they kind of got them away from it. Now, Carroll's really good defensively, and they've, they've gotten some turnovers off of the Falcons. When the Falcons try to drive the gaps, they get their hands on loose balls, and they've come up with some stirring up some live ball turnovers, which have led to some breaks and some yeah. opportunities for him. So I think from Fairfield Union standpoint, Coach Montgomery wants him just to be, just to, just swing it one more time and look inside. There you see a look into the Bloom Carroll huddle and Coach A.J. Ireland in his fourth year as the Bloom Carroll girls coach. And of course, A.J. was a fantastic basketball player for Bloom Carroll back in his high school days. And of course, went on to play for Marietta, which we saw several times when we did the OAC uh, championship games. Marietta, of course, always a staple in that. Did yep. a great job for the Etta Express. They did, and that was fun. You know, we talked about the drives down there to the river, and uh, you know, it was always good to go down and see AJ too, being part of the part of the team. There's Emily Bratton's dad. Got to be nerve wracking as a as a parent watching your your student athletes play, and of course, Emily. You already mentioned is a thousand point score. Still has a whole other year left. A little change in defense. See how long they are. That's a long range three. Put up yeah. no good. Well, what they did is they had uh, Thompson and, and Isabella on the top, Jared, and they're long and athletic, and maybe can bother Carroll a little bit. Little drive, shot off the glass and in for Christian Thompson. She had to check out uh, pretty early in the first half with two fouls, but right. she's a disruptor defensively, and we can see what she just did right there offensively as well. All right, they're going back to their man-to-man -man defense here. Here's a little different look from Carroll. Shot from the free throw line, no good. Defensive rebound for Isabella Neal. And that pass almost stolen away. Alyssa Brown read the pass nicely, just couldn't get a hand on it. It's out of bounds, stays with Fairfield Union. Falcons to inbound. They get it into Ellie Lewis. Lewis gonna go on the drive. She was held to just three points in that first half. One three-pointer. She's coming off of a game where she had 36 points, eight threes in that game against Jackson earlier this week. So here's Terry. Yeah, I think they gotta get the ball to the basket. Three pointer way off and nice rebound. Put back no good, but she's fighting for it again. Yeah. A great job by Nicole Terry. I just really think they have a, a little bit of an edge there, Jared. If they can just get the ball to the rim. She plays strong under there. She is strong. Senior. Pulls him back to within four at 26-22. 
And trapped on the block, and a whistle and a traveling violation. I mean, Nicole Terry's had 20 plus points for three games in a row. Watch it right here, seal, and staying with it. Really yep. good effort by, his, by Terry right there. Lewis brings it up, trailing 26-22. In the corner, it's Martin Dill. She'll lob it inside, but a good job. This yeah. time, defensively, Natalie Lang. Yeah, you're not going to get it on the first, first entry to the wing. You've got to reverse it one time, and I think they can get the ball into her. You know, we saw earlier when she got the ball in, they, they were slow getting the help. Now, right there, that, I mean, that was the, you have a post entry, you got yep. you got to encourage that. Right side is Thompson, now back out top. Wow, a long way out there, Lewis. Three no good, here comes Bratton, one on one with Lewis. She'll kick it back out. Now swing it to the top of the key. Here's a three, and it's in. Nothing but net for Marissa Wilkinson. She's got 12 in the game, all 12 from behind the three-point arc. Now, like we said, she had five down at Logan versus Logan Elm late last week. 29-22. Here's Martin Dill on the drive. Kick it back out. Lewis now. Swing it left side. Quick ball movement by the Falcons. All the way across the court. Nice little running jumper there for Ellie Lewis. Yeah, nice job. You know, she's made all those threes, so they're getting the crowd in her tight. She put the ball on the floor, created a shot. And a turnover for Bloom Carroll. 29-25, Bulldogs lead as the sub comes in. You see the replay here of that last three at the top of the key. Look how far out she is. She is out there. That's Marissa Wilkinson. She averages 14.5 a game. Shot that with confidence, though, Jared. Yep. Quickly up the floor come the Falcons, all the way to the hoop, no good. But a nice rebound again for Terry, and she couldn't get the, the shot this time. A lot of contact, no call. Bratton the other way, gets it to the corner. And a whistle and a travel going to be called. Coach Ireland, he's, he told me he's having fun coaching this group. And, and it's a fun group to coach yeah. because they're skilled, Jared. They get up and down, you know, and I can tell he's having fun over there. 436 and counting here in the third quarter. Bulldogs lead at 29-24, drive and shot no good, but a foul going to be called on the Bulldogs. Yeah, Thompson just took that immediately to the basket. She's just a sophomore also. Alyssa Brown is called for it. That's her third. Yeah, other than Terry and Isabella Neal, a senior, they also have Jillian Wilkinson, a senior, but the rest of this team is going to be back next year. Well, Fairfield and, and Union. some of them for the next couple of years. Yeah, throwing a 17-2 and two JV team yeah. in there, or better as they finish the season now. Yep. Both free throws good for Thompson. Makes it a three-point game, 29-26. Here's a three put up. This time that's off the mark. I think she rushed it a little bit, did Wilkinson, but Bulldogs with the rebound. And she'll fire it up again. This time no good, and a whistle and a foul going to be called on the rebound attempt. Yeah, better job of blocking out. The one thing you have to understand when, when there's three pointers and they're missed, Jared, long shots mean long rebounds. Yes. And right now, you know, the Fairfield Union girls got to understand you, you're going to have to chase some of those down. 29 26. Luke Carroll leads it with 4.06 to play in the third quarter. Lewis gets it to the corner. Sattler back out now to Nicole Terry. Yeah, I, I like this, but now work it to get the ball down low or get a drive to the basket. Skips it down to the corner. Lewis will fire up the three. Long, went over the top of the backboard, but the Falcons come away with the rebound. Good cast, good cut. Terry lost control of it, and it's out of bounds. It'll go off of Bloom Carroll. Yeah, she's just got to take her time when she's in there. She made, it, she made a skip pass and then followed it, Jared, across the lane, got open. Just take your time. Inbound pass comes in. 
Terry will fire up the three from the top of the key, and she got it. And we are tied up at 29, and Coach A.J. Ireland wants a timeout for the Bulldogs. You know the best part of this job, I get to coach two teams. <laughs> yeah. So I'm guaranteed a victory tonight. <laughs> Watch this replay. Nicole Terry just steps out, says, hey, yes. I'm not just a post player. Yeah, just some lack of communication on the Carroll defense right there. Shoot, talking about, you know, the game has just changed over the years. It I is. mean, you never saw a, a post player like that who can, number one, dribble, and number two, shoot it from beyond the three-point arc. Not as much. Um, I, I know I was fortunate over the years. I had a couple that could yeah. step out and do that, and um, it, it's quite a weapon. Because what happens is people can't just sit back and, and have people in the paint. And, right. uh, I love I love the four out, the five out, the skill development. But I've, I'm still a believer that you got to attack the basket, whether it be off dribble drive, whether it be off post feeds, Jared. You still have to attack the basket. Yep. So we are tied up at 29. Fairfield Union going to come with full, some full court pressure. Long inbound pass. Bratton brings it in. Sophia Hahn now with the basketball. Kick it back out. Now left side, it's Brooks. Back out, Wilkinson. Thought about the three, doesn't take it. Now right side, Brooks on the drive. Saw an opening, and her shot's blocked. That's Christian Thompson. Here comes Thompson the other way. Lost the handle, but was <laughs> able to get the pass away somehow. Skip it over in the corner. Lewis for three. In the corner, she drains it. She's cocked and ready when the pass comes, That's I'll right. tell you. 32-29, Fairfield Union. Clock ticking down to 237 here in the third quarter. Low pass over to Wilkinson, able to bring it in. Bratton's going to fire up a long range. Three over top of Ellie Lewis. That, that solves any offensive issues you have. <laughs> Just jump up and shoot it. Simple game, Jared. Simple game. Tied at 32. Top of the key. They'll get it down in now to Nicole Terry. Skip it back out. Samantha Sattler, but it was... A little bit too high. You know, she's she's so unselfish. We got a, of Emily Bratton here, we got a replay. Of course she is, Jared. She's out there. You see, that's not a good enough contest by the right. defender. You got to get the hand up. There's an old saying that hands down, man down. Yep. You're going to get scored on. Here comes Bratton. Tied up at 32, under two minutes to play in the third quarter. And had it. Tipped and lost control of it on the pass. Taken away by Ellie Lewis. Here's Cottrell, trying to get it down underneath to Nicole Terry. It's tipped and out of bounds. It'll stay with Fairfield Union. Yeah, I'd like to see Nicole being, she's very unselfish in there. But once she catches it, just pause. She may have a play there, and she can back down her defender. Thompson inbounds. Swing it to the corner. Cottrell fire up three. No good. Nice rebound by Samantha Sattler. Terry, another three, and in. Twelve points in the ball game for Nicole Terry, and the Falcons now lead at 35-32. Yeah, she's hurting the, the uh, Bulldogs from an unsuspecting spot there, Jared. You're right. Conrad will hand it off. Bratton will fire up another three and get it. <laughs> Back and forth we go. It's the three-point show on both ends of the floor. Here's another one in the corner. Off the iron, no wow. good. Nice rebound, the putback, yeah. no good. Terry fighting for it. And a whistle and a jump ball gonna be caught. It'll stay with Fairfield Union. Yeah, great, great job, Christian Thompson. Watch here. Oh, that's Nicole Terry's. Look at her step back. And got the, the home court feel there, Jared. Martindale almost lost it. Gets into the hands of Ellie Lewis. Lewis drive. What a drive by Ellie Lewis. Yeah, really nice job. Showed her skills with her left hand finish, Jared. And the ball tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with Blue and Carroll. A good defense down there by Martindale. 
Ellie's shown she's just not a three-point shooter, Jared. Long inbound pass comes up to midcourt. <laughs> and they'll get it back out now to Tessa Brooks. And now over to Bratton. She'll drive. Kick it over three. A long one. No good for Wilkinson. But they remain in control of the basketball. Good job on the offensive boards for Bloom Carroll. Bratton's three again. No good. And again, a rebound for the Bulldogs. And almost stolen away. Now it's tied up. And this is going to stay with Bloom Carroll. Yeah, big out-of-bounds possession here. Got to make sure you find your person you're guarding. Good job. I'm not sure everybody knows who they have. They got caught earlier in the game, a little disorganized in the out-of-bounds. Isabella Neal checks back in for Fairfield Union. <laughs> Bratton with nine seconds. Skip it back out. Wilkinson for three, no good. Ball tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with Blue Carroll with 3.1. And now the officials are going to discuss did it go off of a Bloom Carroll player? And it did. They're going to switch it. Martin Doe comes back in for Fairfield Union. She'll replace Avery Cottrell. 3.1 seconds on the clock. Thompson to inbound. We are in the third quarter, 37-35. And the clock just going to run out here in the third quarter. Yeah, good decision not to force something. Pretty good third quarter for the Falcons. They trailed at 26-18 at halftime, and right now have a two-point lead. Well, you know, you know, um, Coach Montgomery told me, you know, this week that they've just had trouble finishing games. He said even the first game up there, which was like a 56-50 to 50 game, they led in the fourth quarter. And he said, we've had a lot of that. Yeah. And, you, and you, you know, honestly, I you know, this is our first time for seeing, but sometimes when you have youthful guards, it's a little harder to understand not playing, but game situation playing. It's yeah. a little different, Jared, and, and how to dictate when you're playing ahead. Now, that, you know, that's not to worry about right now. You got to play these beginning of these first eight minutes like like you play all the time. But once it gets under four minutes, the game changes a little bit depending on. I mean, we only had two fouls in the third quarter. Yeah. So you can get a little aggressive here. Uh, you can change uh, how, how you're going to play this fourth quarter. You can get up and play for some steals. You know, the officials have done a very nice job of letting them play through some contact. Yep. Fairfield Union outscored Bloom Carroll in that third quarter, 19 to nine, led by Nicole Terry. She had two threes in that in that quarter, also yeah. a, a two-point bucket. I tell you, the three-point game tonight is un unbelievable. <laughs> well, Bloom Carroll, Carroll, Carroll has eight three-pointers. Fairfield Union has six. But how many Bloom shot? I mean, uh, you know, I, do, I don't True. know, but that's their game. Yeah. Where I think Fairfield Union, that's part of their game. I think for, for Carroll, that's really a big part. See, he's going to come out in a little 2-3 zone right away. Here's Lewis for three. Got it. Now, that's not the person you want to leave alone and not know where you are. Biggest lead of the night for the Falcons, and they steal it on the inbound. Wow. Here's Lewis, and she's fouled. I believe they're going to get Tessa Brooks with it. Yeah, that's a big play there. Ellie Lewis to the free throw line. First trip there tonight. Yeah, I like to see him step off the line when you miss one, Jared. Step back, regroup, and, and, and work to the next shot. You know, we used to always talk about the most important shot in the game is the next shot. Yeah. Because you can't change the last one. Yep. Second one's up and good. Ellie has 14 in the game, 11 of those yeah, but she, in the second half. She's had a really nice third quarter. Yeah. And not just one dimensional, Jared. In the corner, drive, baseline, it's out of bounds. Back to the Falcons. Here's Lewis bringing it up, being worked on by Tessa Brooks. Lewis now 
Looks at a trap, almost. And a whistle. And Coach Montgomery wants a timeout. Yeah, versus that running and trapping pressure, you want to stay out of the corners, Jared. That's just, it's like a magnet. Um, you have to break players of that habit. Yeah. I, I, what level, whatever level you're playing, it just seems they want to go right to the corner with the ball. And uh, if you can persuade them to do that, that's a good thing defensively. Just a reminder, we'll be right back here at Fairfield Union next Friday night for these same two schools, but on the boys' side. Yeah, it'll be interesting as always. You know, the first time this year the Falcon boys went to Bloom and won, won up there. So, you know, I saw Coach Schaefer talking in the, in the newspaper about, you know, they're trying to win this league. Yeah. And every night they're playing is considered a league championship. And they've got two more before that game next Friday. Yeah. So it's been an interesting week. They are currently, I believe, 15 and three on the season. And Coach Shaver, he, he did a really nice job on the girls' side for several yes. years. Had moved over now to the boys, and I believe in his uh, second year on the boat with the boys, and just uh, doing a tremendous job. And I tell you what, he's got a tough job because not only is he coaching basketball, he's assistant principal, so he's, he's a busy man. <laughs> you are a busy person <laughs> when you're doing that. You can see the uh, banners hanging on the wall here. Not for very long. 41-35, <laughs> Fairfield Union with the lead and the basketball in the fourth quarter. 7.15 on a running clock. Lewis, a lot I of like it. Terry. I like it. Power dribble blocked from behind yeah. by Charlie Conrad. I like it. I'd like to see a reversal when it happened. You wouldn't have all the help side, but I like the timeout by Coach Montgomery. Get it inside. Bratton going to back it out, reset an offense. Back out now to Bratton, now right side, Wilkinson. There's Brooks, or Brown that is. Brown drives, kick it back out to Conrad. Now Bratton, a lot of patience here from Bloom Carroll, looking for that right shot. Nice drive by Bratton, high off the glass, no good. Rebound to by the Falcons. Yeah, very tough shot, running left-hander. Versus pressure. Lewis gets it over to Terry. Now here's Martindale. Lewis to the elbow, now kick it back out to Neal. This is a good possession though. Now you gotta make sure if you've held it this long, here's what I like her doing, Jared. Backing down the post. Yep. And now throw it back in there. There's a lob inside to Terry, and this time it's out of bounds. It'll go off of Terry. Yeah, I don't. I don't think the lob's the answer. Right. You know, if, if you can get somebody into the high post, you can run a little high low with her. Both teams getting some subs into the game. Natalie Lang comes in for Bloom Carroll, and back in for the Falcons is Christian Thompson. Bulldogs with the basketball, trailing it by six, 41-35. Brown is trapped in the corner, and Coach Ireland, yep. that's a good timeout. Real good. You know, we, we talked about this league and how, how tough it is, but and I think it starts with those coaches. Th this league is not only full of good teams, but you think about A.J. Ireland, Ryan Montgomery, Scott Burke out at Liberty Union, Tim Leist out of Amanda. I mean, these are really good basketball coaches. Exactly. And, I, I, you know, we don't get to see Taze in Circleville, Pickaway County schools sure. a whole lot. And I, I know we saw Circleville one year out here, and I was really yep. impressed with what they do. Taze Valley obviously is, has a good team because they're tied for the conference lead. Um, so you're right. It starts with good coaching. Uh, you have good players. You have good a good school district with support, sure. and then you put coaches with that, all of a sudden, you're pretty doggone good. 5.37 to play in the fourth quarter. Fairfield Union leads at 41-35. Bloom Carroll still looking for their first score in the fourth quarter. They only have nine points in the second half. Well, the thing is, and you know, Coach Montgomery mentioned this, you know, they're a little streaky. And when you shoot threes as, you know, your priority offense, part yeah. of your offense, it's going to be like that, Jared. But 
you got to remember, one out of three threes is similar to 50%. That's, you know, that's, yep. and, and you'll take that. I mean, right. you'll, you'll take shooting 50%. Absolutely. Right now, Fairfield Union outscoring Bloom Carroll 23 to 9 here in this second half. And really, you know, Blue Carroll has not had many shots in the second half. They've taken, you know, they've had some. Yeah. But they've been a lot have been contested. Here's Bratton. Well, she's going to get some. Drive, kick it back out, three put up, and in for Tessa Brooks. She really has come into the game and changed it. Yes, she she's has. She's done a nice job for Blue Carroll, and that's what you want. Yeah. And a turnover for Fairfield Union. That three brings it back to within three. Uh, that's what we just talked about. You know the threes make up a lot of deficit. And when that's, again, like your priority part of your offense, that just came natural. Emily, Emily Bratton made a nice penetration and pitched it. Here's a three in and out. Rebounded by Natalie Lang. Bratton now. Skips it over in the corner, and Brooks couldn't handle it. It's out of bounds. Yeah, it's a long pass and a tough catch. Twenty-seven of Bloom Carroll's thirty-eight points are from three points. It, it's pretty evident what they, you know, <laughs> they want to do. Here's Lewis. Tough, tight defense by Tessa Brooks. Three put up, no good. For Samantha Sattler, rebounded by the Bulldogs. Clock down to 440 and counting here in the fourth quarter. Setting up over in the corner is Brown. Nice quick step to baseline, but did a nice job. Ter Nicole Terry did a nice job coming over from that far block on the backside help. Dump inside. Did it go off of, yes, it did. Went off of Isabella Neal. It's all right, you always want to help early, Jared. On the weak side, you want to be there soon. Bratton to inbound. Gets it into Wilkinson. And that's going to be a foul all day long. Yep. Just can't reach. That's the second again, on Isabella Neal. It's your first foul of the half. And we're four minutes to go in the game, so yep. that's not bad. Bratton will inbound to Tessa Brooks. We talked about the youthfulness of Fairfield Union. How about the youthfulness of <laughs> Bloom Carroll as well? It's uh, it, it's pretty uh, it's pretty um, amazing how good they are. Yeah. Their skill level is really good, and so many better. Wilkinson will swing it around now in the corner. Three put up off the, I thought she was going to bank it in. From That's a tough place to bank it. And a whistle foul going to be called on Fairfield Union. Yeah, he's calling on Isabella Neal for holding. She, she's blocking out on the backside, and instead of going and getting the ball, she kind of tried to keep her defender from, or, or the offensive player from getting it. Called her for a hold. And that's three on Isabella. It's all right at this time. Bratton, off balance, shot <laughs> no good. Rebounded by the Falcons. Here's Thompson. Thompson back out now to Ellie Lewis. 3.34 and counting here in the fourth quarter. 41-38, Falcons lead. Nicole Terry sees an open three, no good. Rebounded by Bratton. Here's a three in the corner, no good for Brown. Lewis going to slow it down for Fairfield Union. Coach Montgomery's trying to get him to run their offense. And a whistle and a foul going to be called on Bloom Carroll. They called it on Bratton. Martindale going to check back in for Fairfield Union. Yeah, she seemed a little tired. Samantha Sadler, she, she's a sophomore. She looked a little weary. Offensive foul going to be called on Fairfield Union. They called it on Macy Martindale. I didn't see it. It was away from the basketball. Yeah, I missed that one. 
I look down. That's what happens at basketball. You yeah, look down, right. you miss. You're right. A little full court pressure from Fairfield Union. Down under three minutes to play in the game, 41-38. Fairfield Union with the three-point lead, and the ball tipped from behind and stolen away. Avery Cottrell got a hand on it. Here's Ellie Lewis. She'll drive, try to get it back out, and it's tipped out of bounds off of Ellie Lewis. Hey, remember what we said when you beat pressure, Jared. Where's the retreat? Middle of the floor. As a ball handler, you got to be conscious yep. of that. Another loose ball taken away by Fairfield Union. Yeah, just not really taking care of the ball very well here at this point in time. They got to get a stop here, though. On the drive, Thompson kick it over in the corner. Nice little fake there by Terry. Backs her way in. Quick ball move around to Cottrell. Now in the corner, Isabella Neal for three. She got it. <laughs> 44-38, Fairfield Union with the lead. We are getting down close to two minutes to go in the game. Bloom Carroll playing for at least a share in the Mid-State League Buckeye Division. They beat Fairfield Union on their home court back on December 20th, beat them by six points. Right now they find themselves down by six points. With just over a minute and a half to play. Here's Bratton, wide open shot and got it. That's very, very well composed, Jared. Took her time and made sure she got a make. Lewis, and a good timeout by Coach Montgomery. <laughs> he could see the trap coming right there. Yeah, the pressure. Bloom's done a nice job in that little man-to-man -man trap pressure. Watch, watch here. Coach Montgomery told me this week, Isabella has really improved offensively. She does a lot of other things. She screens, she rebounds, but here, he said nice. she's really improved her shooting. Yeah. And there's an evidence of it right there. 122 to play in the ball game, 44 to 40. Fairfield Union leads it. And as we mentioned, Blue Carroll playing for at least a share of the Mid-State League Buckeye. We don't have an update. Uh, Taze Valley is playing Liberty Union. That's yeah. the other team at the top of the division. Well, we, we know that Taze obviously has a good program. That they've been actually pretty good for quite a while now, yeah. but we also know what Abby Riddle brings to the game right. for, for Liberty, and they've played a lot better recently. So yeah. never know. That's the fun part of these legs this time of year. I don't know, necessarily know for the coaches, but for us to come and watch <laughs> it is. Got an exciting one here at Fairfield Union. I would say it's heating up, but it's it's been hot in this gym <laughs> since the, from the start. Yeah, and hot air rises, <laughs> as you know. It's all come up here, hasn't it's it? It's true. So it'll be Falcon basketball on the near sideline, right at midcourt. They'll get it into Ellie Lewis. You've Lewis got fouls. Almost had it stolen away. You've got fouls. You've got to go out and make them, make them attack. Because there and you go. Steal. Good turnover. Good pass up ahead to Brooks. Or check that to Brown. Now back out. The three put up off the iron. No good for Wilkinson. And a rebound for Fairfield Union. Under a minute to play. Big rebound right there. Terry going to hold the basketball. Hand it off to Lewis. Over to Martin Dill. And she's trapped. And again, a timeout by Coach Montgomery with 42.9 seconds. And I think he's out of timeouts at this point. You know what they've got to do? They've got to attack the pressure, Jim. Yep. Because with Carroll having the fouls, they have an opportunity to you yeah. know, pressure and then get them on sidelines and use the out-of-bounds sideline as an extra defender. I know a lot can happen in the next 42.9 seconds, but let's get to our players of the game. Let's do the Fairfield or the uh, Bloom Carroll player of the game first, brought to you by Bay Food Market. Stop in at Bay's and check out their weekly gourmet burger and brat selection and their weekend steak specials. Bay Food Market at the corner of Walnut and Maple Streets in Lancaster. Well, obviously, Emily Bratton makes this thing go. She handles the yep. ball. She shoots the ball. She gets the ball to other people. She's a distributor. 
you know, there's, they, have a, they have a nice team, but, but Emily really makes the thing go. So congratulations, right there you see her, number three, Emily Bratton has 19 points currently in the game. She is our Bay Food Market Bloom Carroll player of the game, and she's got a steal right here. Nice pass, and the shot block. Good job by Christian Thompson hustling back. Neal with the rebound. Now you gotta attack their pressure. Down to 29 seconds. Thompson. Down to the corner. You gotta to go. Dill. Nice now pass. Terry puts it up, no good! And it's rebounded by Bloom Carroll with 18 seconds. <laughs> Here come the Bulldogs, Wilkinson. Down to 14 seconds. In the corner, three put up for Alyssa Brown, and she got it! <laughs> wow. A one-point game with 8.1 seconds to play. Alyssa Brown, her first bucket of the game, and it's a big one. Watch well, this. Well, watch here. She got open in the corner, and they're transitioning. They like to get somebody down below the volleyball line, Jared, open. And she's taking a few tonight, but that one, she made sure she hit it. And it pulls them to within one at 44-43. They put one, a little bit more than a second onto the clock, so it's 9.6 is what it is. Well, here, if you're Carroll, you only got 14 fouls. You can really overplay this really hard and maybe get another turnout, yeah. turnover. Um, and, you know, it's going to be the, the first priority for the Falcons is, number one, get the ball in bounds. Number two, protect it. You don't have to go across half court, Jared. There's less than 10 seconds. Sir, if, if you're Coach Island, are you telling them to foul before the ball is even inbound? Or are you telling no, them, hey, no. let's get us a steal? Yeah, we're going to go for a play. We're going to steal. We're going to face you up. We're going to trap, cheat for a pass because you might get a steal and you can win the game. Yeah. And if you're on Fairfield Union side, you got to know you don't have to get across half court. Right. You don't have to go anywhere. Right. All you got to do is hold on to the basketball. Yep. Not there cannot be up. a 10 second violation. Exactly. Impossible. Yep. 9.6 to play. Falcons lead it by one, 44-43. They will inbound. Thompson gets it into Martindale, and she's fouled yeah. immediately. Clock down to 8.4. Yeah, you got to do it again now. Your bloom carry, you got to get up and not let them get open. Now she has a spot, Jared. She can't run the baseline either. So it's tougher pass from that clear over there. So what you got to do is you got to face up. They got two on, on the first receiver. Don't worry if you foul. And the official on the near side was having a long conversation with Well, you got to deny. You got to deny. See, she's not to Martin Dill, and she's fouled. She's got to deny her the ball. Make him throw it. She can't throw it over your head because the backboard's in the way. Yeah. You know, she's got to understand. Of course, she's a young player. 7.2 seconds now. Yeah, Tessa Brooks, a young player. She's got to get in front of her. Foul before the clock started. Now it's one and one. Yep. And that's what they wanted right that's there. That's fine. Yeah. And you, you have one of the people that's not been in the game a lot have to go to the line. And that's a good, that's good. no time clicked off the, the no. clock there. No, you got to have time to get the ball down the floor. So at some point on the overplay, you got to foul. So Ellie Lewis will go to the free throw line. Well, that's good for the Falcons. She has 14 points in the game, just one of them from the free throw line. Now the officials are going to discuss. I think they're just making sure that she's the correct shooter. And I think that was at the request of Coach Ireland. So they did yes. the right thing, get together, make sure. Lewis, free throw up and good. Plus Coach Ireland, he's got three timeouts. He can get the ball to half court and call timeout. Second free throw also good. And she'll call it from here. So a timeout for Coach Ireland. His team trails it by three, 46-43, 7.2 on the clock. Let's get to our Fairfield Union player of the game, brought to you by the Savings Bank, where community always comes first. The Savings Bank, proud of our heritage, founded by local people committed to serving individuals and businesses in southeastern Ohio. Learn more at thesavingsbank.com. Well, I, you know, I, I, I really like what um, Nicole Terry's given tonight. A lot of effort and done a lot of things, but 
I think L.A. Lewis has really turned it up offensively yeah. this half. Handled the ball. She's shown that she's not just a three-point shooter. You know, I, I'm sure Coach Montgomery has to remind her once in a while, put the ball on the floor, get right. to the basket. She's done a great job. So Ellie Lewis, number five, congratulations. She is our Fairfield Union Savings Bank player of the game. She had just three points at halftime. Right now she's up to 16 to lead her team. Yeah, she's done a nice job. She's had to handle the ball, Jared, also guard um, Emily Bratton. She's yeah. done a lot tonight to really help the team. Both teams with two players in double figures. It's Lewis and Nicole Terry for Fairfield Union, and for Bloom Carroll, Emily Bratton, and Marissa Wilkinson. So here we go. I'd say get the ball to half court and call another timeout, Jared, and run your side out of bounds. Bratton will inbound it. Looking, looking. There you Gets go. Gets it in. She's got to go. to six seconds. Timeout. It's Tessa Brooks to Bratton, down to two seconds, and she's fouled. He's calling timeout. Coach was calling timeout. I was called on but, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something. If you plan on calling timeout on half court, tell the officials before time, yeah. the play. It helps. Yeah, during that last timeout. Yes. And now the officials, I think they're going to get together and check to see he, if the clock is correct. So this is almost like a free timeout right here for Coach <laughs> yes. Ireland. He's going to take advantage of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. As the officials are discussing. That's a good look right there into the officials. But it's a good job by them getting together to make sure that they're correct. Because he, he was signaling, Jared. I, you know, I have him right in view here before it got down to that point. So we'll see what they do. It says 1.5 right now. I think they are going to award him a timeout. How much time are they going to put on the clock? Three point five. Wow. I, I think that's probably yeah, accurate. Two seconds there. To be honest with you, yeah. I think so. And on an inbound play, that's, I mean, that could mean the difference right there. Well, it's, you know what? And like I said, he could have solved it um, maybe yeah. if he was planning that anyway. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't like Emily Bratton taking it out of bounds. No. <laughs> so they'll inbound it from right at midcourt. I wanted Bratton to get it. trying to get open. And Coach Ireland calls a timeout. That's a smart one. He, yeah. he had the count going in his head. Yes, absolutely. And is that their, no, they've got one one left, I believe. Just not a lot of movement right there to, to get open. No, you, no you, got, you got to create space again. You know, we talk, I talk about that a lot, but it's hard to guard space. Yeah. You know, spread them out a little bit, make some good hard cuts, and don't be afraid to fake. Watch here, see they're all, there's no space, Jared. Yeah, they're all bunched up there, all yeah. four of them. It's like a youth soccer game. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. There's just no way. And, there, there and good pressure. Got Thompson on the ball here. Weren't She's really long. Good screens. Now, no. Spread them out a little bit. Run your run your best play that they all know. That's what I used to tell them. Run it. Run. We're going to run what we know, and we practiced it. And what you do then is you emphasize the details. Make sure you pass fake. Give a head and shoulder fake to the defender. Come back the other way. Stuff like that is what you talk about yeah. at the timeout. You try to pre-script it. So Marissa Wilkinson will inbound. Keep in mind, she's hit four threes tonight for all 12 of her points. She's a big three-point shooter, but she's inbounding. Right there. Here's Bratton. Yep. Bratton for three. Off the iron, no good, and the Falcons will win it 46-43. About as good as you're going to get in that situation. I like the play there. What a game we had here tonight. Fairfield Union comes from behind. They trailed at 26 to 18 at halftime. They win at 46, 43. Here's the, the replay. Yeah, I mean, watch. When you got the sideline, you can throw it ahead. She did. Good job of, is, is that Isabella Neal? Yeah, yep. yeah, good defense. That's a great job Without of making fouling, sure there's yep. pressure. She darn near banked it in. She still. did. We almost had free basketball. <laughs> oh, Let's my. check the scoring, first of all, for Bloom Carroll. It was Charlie Conrad with two points. Tessa Brooks had seven off the bench, a really good game for Tessa. Alyssa Brown had three. It was Marissa Wilkinson with 12. And Emily Bratton led the way with 19 points for Bloom Carroll. For Fairfield Union, it was Macy Martindale with three. 
Isabella Neal had five. Samantha Sattler had five. Christian Thompson with five. Nicole Terry with a good game with 12 points. And leading the way for the Fairfield Union Falcons, Ellie Lewis had 16 points as the Falcons see their record raise to 10 and nine overall, seven and seven in the Mid-State League Buckeye. Bloom Carroll falls to 13 and eight and 10 and four in the Buckeye division. Actually, that's eight and six. That's my fault. That Bloom Car or, uh, Fairfield Union raises their record to eight and six yeah, they, in the Mid-State well, League. Yeah, they've played well. You know, that's six out of seven wins. They're yeah. going to be um, they're going to be interesting. Um, because they probably didn't get a great seed in the Southeast, but there's going to be somebody not wanting to play them. Absolutely. I guarantee you. So 46-43 is our final score from Fairfield Union tonight. We'll be back on the air next Friday night from this exact same spot, these two same schools. It'll be the boys' side, Fairfield Union and Bloom Carroll. The last time it was kind of flip-flop. We came into tonight with Bloom Carroll having won the, yes. the first ma matchup. For the boys' side, Fairfield Union won the first matchup out of Bloom Carroll. What do you proceed for that one? Well, as far as this goes, that was a heck of a game. Yeah. Both teams extremely well coached like we talked about. And, you know, you come in, you play hard like that. It, those are two very good teams. And I, I want to give a big shout-out to both coaches taking the time this week out of their busy schedules. Yeah. Um, to both classroom teachers and taking their time to share about their teams with me. Um, I can't say enough, but. Now, I'm excited about next Friday because I have not seen Coach Davis's team at all. Yeah. And, you know, we talked about Travis Schaefer earlier in the year. They're, they're going to be playing probably for a share of a league championship yep. or an outright. That's so, true. And that's big. I mean, that's, you know, we talk about goals, and, and we used to do that with players. And what, our first goal as a team was always to win our league. Right. People go, well, aren't, isn't it to win the state championship? Absolutely. It was the ultimate goal. Sure. But to get there, when there's a championship on the line, I always went for that first goal. I want to say thanks, uh, of course, to the coaches. Uh, always cordial, giving us any information we need. Ryan Montgomery from Fairfield Union, A.J. Ireland from Bloom Carroll. Also the athletic directors, Andy Clark at Fairfield Union, Becky Hinkle at Bloom Carroll, and, of course, our Interface Video Productions crew tonight, Josh Messerly, Donnie Zickfeld, Shane Messina, Jason Roush, and Tom Russo. Again, your final score tonight, Fairfield Union wins it 46-43. For our entire Interphase Video Productions crew and Tim Shoemaker, I'm Jared Stewart. Have yourselves a great night, everybody. IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Basketball Game of the Week. Brought to you by... Buckeye Toyota, Bay Food Market, Fairfield County Adam H, The Savings Bank, Fairfield Medical Center, The Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, The Carriage Company, Fairfield DD, Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, Dagger Law, and North Body Shop.